Hey guys, so we have some new news and some new information about the live action Spider-Man series that's being produced by Lord and Miller. So I wanted to talk about that and give some of my own thoughts on it. Spider-Baby shoot some spider webs. Thank you. Okay, so this is not new information that Lord and Miller are making a live action Spider-Man. Even going back to April, there's a couple of different major online news articles, including Deadline, that were covering the fact that Phil Lord and Chris Miller inked a mega deal with Sony Pictures Television. So that alone just raises some interesting thoughts, because before Sony had the rights to make any kinds of uh, animated Spider-Man or anything like that, it was originally owned by Marvel, and then they licensed it for a while. It seems to be different from the movie production rights that they you know, basically sold out or licensed to Sony. So it's just that Sony ended up following up with it and tag teaming it and also wanting to do the animated. But then it reverted back to Disney and now there's a brand new thing where Phil Lord and Chris Miller are going to be making a combination of comedic live action Spider-Man, dramatic live action Spider-Man based and animated Spider-Man based shows. So I'm going to talk about what shows we know so far in production, which ones are rumored or what we have any kind of sources for and what would make sense. And then what I specifically would like to see, which hopefully, you know, they might implement some of these fan choices for the series and why I think that it's specifically five to six that they're doing. But the reason why, even this is old information, there's something new that comes to the table is that in theory, if there was going to be Spider-Man, it was going to be a different actor. Kind of like how, uh, if you look at the Marvel Disney side of things, they technically, FX is now a Disney property and uh, creatively, I think they are basically beholden to Kevin Feige now for any kind of Marvel productions there. And specifically, they do have Legion, which is now technically a post Disney merger Marvel mutant property. And that has one version of, for instance, Professor Xavier, but on the movie side, they have another actor, just like back when FX was a Fox specifically property uh, prior to the merger, they had one uh, version of Professor Xavier, but then the movie versions, the Fox X movies also had another version. So similarly with, they were going to have the Tom Holland Spider-Man that Sony was allowed to do that had to take place in the MCU, and they could do these live action ones. But I think that they were playing the long play, that they knew that the negotiation was coming up, and they specifically thought, hey, now that we can have Tom Holland be in the TV side if we don't reach an agreement. So just to tackle that concept right there, I think that there was a sense in which Sony didn't want the negotiations to succeed to elongate their sharing arrangement with Disney because for a few different reasons. Per their original agreement, they couldn't have Spider-Man crossover with Venom either on the Sony side or the Marvel side because that would mean that Venom in either of those two situations was part of the MCU and they didn't want Marvel to have control of that. They still want to make some of their money on their side that was the non-Spider-Man like Venomverse originally, now it's going to be Spider-Verse because they've got Spider-Man back. So it seems like in two different versions of the renegotiation pitch, according to some of these maybe sources that aren't as veritable or verifiable, take it with a grain of salt, they may actually have truth in this case, but somebody said like, listen, if you can have Tom Hardy, Eddie Brock, Venom cross over in the MCU, we'll continue to allow you to use Spider-Man, provided that everything else makes sense fiscally as well. But since they won't, here's what they're thinking. Okay, well then, we'll just not come to an agreement. We'll have Spider-Man back with all of the benefits of the coattails that he's been riding in the MCU. And now he'll validate and lift up the value indirectly of our Venomverse and make it a fully blown Spider-Verse. And then, you know, maybe like once you guys are done with everything you have planned for phases four and five, then maybe we can come back to the table. So then everyone benefits. Of course, this also means that Tom Holland Spider-Man can now be in these live-action TV shows, as well as crossover in the cinematic Venomverse. So he can be in the Venom sequel. Venom can be in Spider-Man 3. Um, you know, he can now face off against Carnage. So these are some things. So here's what we know so far. Even earlier than the original story that broke with Lord Miller, there was a source, and so here's why, I take this with a grain of salt, there might have been some credibility to the source. A prior month, we got this covered, basically said that they had an insider source, obviously due to anonymity. They couldn't reveal who it was, but they that Sony was actually already thinking about making a Spider-Man based TV show, and people were kind of scratching their heads, like, how does that even make sense? Does you know Sony lost their rights to make animated Spider-Man TV series, and this would be live action? And doesn't Marvel have the rights for Spider-Man on the TV side at least, uh, even if they have the cinematic rights? So that that's a little bit confusing because we don't have the full details of that contract uh, even, but we do know that Disney to this day makes Disney Spider-Man animated. So whether it's the format or whether it, maybe it's the length of time, like maybe they can make serial. 30 minute episodes, whereas um, the Sony side for TV for Spider-Man, the rights that they have maybe, has to be longer, like hour, an hour long or so. And that brings up an interesting point I'm going to cover in another video in which, theoretically, actually, Marvel can still use Spider-Man Tom Holland while Sony uses him. And I'll provide my thoughts on whether I think that's a good idea or not, or whether that's something they can do or not, and what that would mean. But that'll be in a separate video. But basically, before this Lord Miller story broke, there was the idea that 
either possibly the current actor who's playing Flash Thompson, Tony Revolori, could play Agent Venom, which if you've read the comics, you know that that's basically Flash Thompson admires Spider-Man, and he's so inspired by Spider-Man's sacrifices and everything that he consistently does for the average people that he decides to go fight overseas with the US military, gets his legs blown off, and he thinks, oh, I'm never gonna walk again, I'm never gonna be able to serve again. And basically, this US government agency says, well, we found a way to tame the Venom symbiote so that you could be fully in charge and you'd have all the powers and you could walk again and fight again. But the catch is you have to work for us and, and keep continuing to serve on these missions. And Flash Thompson, you know, if you know his character development at this point, says, heck yeah, I'm gonna do that. So then you have Agent Venom, which is like a successor to Eddie Brock, sort of. On that note, I'm gonna break down in like a top six style what things that Lord Miller are going to have in the works. So first of all, they could do a Flash Thompson Agent Venom. If they want an older, more mature version of them, they could just do another actor versus Tony, especially if you know his character doesn't seem to be developed enough yet by Far From Home. Then again, if this is later on the roster, later on the slate, then maybe by that point, the actor who plays Flash will be several years older, he'll look more mature, and maybe he'll show that maturity in Spider-Man 3, which could be released before this live TV series can be released. Then you have probably a Spider-Verse-based animated spinoff. So that could be something probably not necessarily something they want to do cinematically so cinematically the into the spider-verse sequel will probably be released in theaters however we do know and you can check this out on wikipedia and its sources that amy pascal has said that she was thinking of a female-centric uh, spin-off as well and from what we know of that it seems like when stacy this would be like kind of a side story that would kind of uh, complement the into the spider-verse maybe this could be the tv side you know the animated one that lord miller do do um haha i said do do but Lord and Miller actually did work on Into the Spider-Verse, so it makes sense that they would do any kind of spin-offs, whether it's a sequel or something that could maybe go to TV, specifically this, where so Gwen Stacy, or Spider-Gwen, meets up with Jessica Drew, the original Spider-Woman, and that would be animated, and that would kind of tie into the movies, probably in a way that you could watch the sequel without having to watch the TV and still enjoy it, but if you watch the TV spin-off and then watch that sequel, there's just an extra layer of Easter egg and, uh, you know, enjoyment that you can get out of it. So number three, we might have a live-action Tom Holland Spider-Man that kind of would work the same way. It could take place either before or after Spider-Man 3, or maybe he would just cameo, like Tom Holland's Spider-Man would cameo in some of these other live-action things, including Agent Venom and Into the Spider-Verse sequel. Speaking of which, there you, you have seen that uh, Tom Holland said that he would be interested in doing a live-action version of the Spider-Verse, which originally ties back to the comics. Uh, there's like a Doomsday story arc, and you even see it in the 90s animated series, where Spider-Man meets up with several versions of himself, including one where he meets up with just an actor who plays Spider-Man. So it, it was almost like breaking the fourth wall in another dimension. Spider-Man's a fictional character, and he's just an actor in the Spider-Man suit. So it's kind of like a gag there, and he says, I'm just going to go hide on the table, and you know, you other guys will go fight the villains. So in the same way they could have, if they would be willing to do this, a Tobey Maguire, Andrew Garfield, Tom Holland, maybe a live-action Miles Morales, a live-action Spider-Gwen, uh, who would all you know cross over in this event. And it could be TV-based instead of movie-based. So that's something else to think about. Number four, that would also bring up the possibility of a live-action Miles Morales. It doesn't have to be based on Into the Spider-Verse. It could be, t it can take place on another world and uh, basically cover that version of Miles Morales. Maybe one that's a little bit closer to another comic book front of Miles Morales, and then they could cross over. Craven the Hunter, if they don't want to make that into a movie, that could be a TV show as well. Silver and Black, instead of being a movie, could be a TV show. You know, Jackpot was something that they were throwing out there. That could be a TV show. The Sinister Six might work better on a live-action TV versus movie, so that they're not trying to cram too much into one thing. You could also have like a live-action Spider-Gwen. You could have a spin-off live-action of any of the movies that are in production, which would include Morbius and Venom. So that's what we know so far that we have any sort of evidence for. So here's why I think that they're doing this. There's two reasons. Number one, they're looking at Marvel as their model, and they're saying, you know what, Marvel is doing really well, now that they're going to be doing more to cross over the TV and the movie side, which they weren't doing so much before when they had things like Netflix, Daredevil, where he wouldn't also appear, Charlie Cox wouldn't also appear in the movie, even though it was technically in his contract in case they did decide to go that route. So now with the Disney Plus, where they are trying to do some of that crossover, I think Sony's like, hey, this is a really good idea. We already have these Venomverse and now Spider-Verse, Sony Marvel movies. So if we do things in the TV show, we can have them crossover. Number two, I think that they probably would have a big crossover event similar to how like Daredevil, Punisher, etc. had a crossover event in the Netflix series. So number one, characters from one series, cameo in another series. And then number two, they have the big crossover Defender series. So for me, I would think that they could do one or two crossovers or both. Number one could be that live action into the Spider-Verse themed concept. And then number two, you could have a Sinister Six and that could cameo some of these people. It could cameo Tom Hardy, Venom, it could cameo Tom Holland, Spider-Man, it could cameo Jared Leto Morbius, and it could cameo villains that are already established in several of the movies. So it could have Matt Gargan Scorpion, they've established the Vulture, they've established, you know, Shocker, they have established Mysterio, 
uh, whether he's still alive or whether this would be like a successor to Mysterio. Technically, there's an argument that could be made that the chameleon has been established. So that's definitely a possibility. And then you would just need one more that you could introduce. Specifically, for villains that they haven't utilized yet, I would like to see Kingpin if there's agreement because they were able to use Kingpin into the Spider-Verse as well as on the Marvel television side. So maybe they have like a joint sharing line for that because he was equally established in both the non-Spider-Man Marvel comic universe as well as the Spider-Man. So if that was the case, then D'Onofrio would be awesome reprising that role in a live TV series and a movie. Hobgoblin, I always thought, was a super cool villain and they could even have, I mean, like, if, if they really wanted to do fan service, they could even have Mark Hamill uh, play the Hobgoblin, that would be super cool. Or they could have Ned Leeds become Hobgoblin, but that would be kind of weird. I mean, in the in the original comics, Ned Leeds does become Hobgoblin, but uh, right now he's the man in the chair for Spider-Man, so they could still do it. It could be like a really interesting twist. Carnage would be an awesome Sinister Six, but you know maybe they would want to have him just be like a standalone villain. With these TV series, they could also establish new love interests. So if things don't work out with MJ, they could reprise the original Mary Jane Watson. They could also bring back Felicia Hardy and have her be Black Cat. That would be definitely an interesting dynamic that they haven't done, a super powered girlfriend slash frenemy who like sometimes crosses the line and Spider-Man has to, Peter Parker Spider-Man has to kind of decide whether he likes her, whether he helps her um, try to not be bad or whether he has to sometimes like report her to, let's say, Sable. Some unused storylines that they could do, I'm just gonna name them off like Top Six style. Craven's Last Hunt, you know, unless they wanna change that and make that be about them, but even then, one of those could be a live action Tom Hardy Venom series. Uh, they could do Maximum Carnage. They could either do this in a Spider-Man movie like Spider-Man 4 or in Venom 3. They could also do the Clone Saga with Ben Riley. That would be really cool. They could do the Six-Arm Saga where he was trying, starting to mutate further and further into uh, basically like a human spider instead of Spider-Man. They could do the Invasion of the spider Slayers with Alistair Smythe. That would be especially cool to do if you did it with D'Onofrio's portrayal of Wilson Fisk slash Kingspin. Then you could also do the Spider-Man aliases. This would actually work really extremely well for the heels of Spider-Man Far From Home. So if you ever read the comics, when he basically was had to go into hiding, he cameoed all of these other things. So not Night Monkey, but like he had this one version of himself where he had a jetpack and then he had to like change up his fighting styles and what powers he was allowed to use or how he portrayed them. So that people think these were other random vigilante superheroes that were popping up that were not Spider-Man. So they could have him be like Ricochet and all of these other things. And that might be pretty cool. Some other spin-off series, they could also have Spider-Woman as Julia Carpenter version and they could do Anti-Venom. So they could have Tom Hardy become anti-band, which would be pretty cool. So what would you like to see as part of an animated or live action series? Please let me know in the comments below what you would like to see if Lord Miller can do. Do you think that anyone aside from Lord Miller could have like a separate division of Sony TV that might also do use some of these IPs, kind of like how Marvel was doing? Do you think it'd be a good idea or a bad idea? One thing I do know about Lord Miller is they do have a very quirky sense of humor. So whether it's more of their drama genre or their comedy genre or their animated genre, you know, animated, you can think of Cloudy with a chance of meatballs. And then you could look into other things that they've done. Uh, a lot of them are just really quirky, so I'm wondering if these are all, instead of being like a little bit more serious and dramatic and gritty like some of the Marvel television is, if these are just going to be all like quirky, like family friendly, and do you feel like that would take away from some of the gravitas and the seriousness of what they can do? So just let me know what you think guys. If you like this video, please hit the like button, please subscribe, and please hit the notification bell, it really does help out the channel. Please click here for my other video on how Tom Holland, Spider-Man, can actually still be in the MCU legally moving forward even with the sharing arrangement not continued and whether I think this is going to be or about it and whether I think Disney or Marvel may take advantage of this or may say nay. Thanks again for watching everyone. See you next time.